good start. Okay. Very great. Very great. Uh, it is it is enjoyable to see all of you. I wish we were all together in person. Wouldn't that just be wonderful? Lovely, but at least we can see each other. But at least at least we can talk and see each other, yes. Right. Except That's for right. those who are hiding. That's right. <laughs> you're really eating lunch. <laughs> yes, exactly. I hate to eat on camera, so it's okay if you're eating. I am. <laughs> so where was the meeting supposed to be this at this point? Was it going to be in San Diego or Cancun? Cancun. Cancun. Ah. And then that was canceled and it was moved to Chicago late spring. Ah. And then and well, that's just been moved now to the fall. Yeah. I've heard that the spring one may be virtual also. Mm. Uh, right, right. Yeah. What happens? I guess until we're vaccinated. Yeah. And I mean, we've, we've got so much work to learn how to do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we might as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, capitalize. Yes, very good. So Tracy, you must have uh, woken up very early today, right? <laughs> yeah, it was nice of them to not uh, start the sessions till 9.30 Eastern. Yes. So it's only 7.30 out here in Utah, 6.30 for anybody in California. They have it even earlier. I saw a poster yesterday morning, um, Mark Van Dam at um, Washington State. In oh, wow. So it was 6.30, pitch black. <laughs> that is definitely, definitely they were balancing good. california with europe and i'm afraid yeah a bunch of european are. friends yeah, yeah. And they're, they're staying up late and yes and they're, so and they're joining and that's great yeah which is it is wonderful so making it work making it work i just wanted to say that i will uh, leave the talk rather the uh, our lunch rather early because i need to prepare for the next session <laughs> Yes. I'm actually in a session right now. <laughs> I'm actually chairing a session right now. Oh, my. Uh, we, we appreciate you coming. Well, so, I wouldn't yes. miss it. Yes. So, well, we, we will go ahead and, and get started then. All right. So everybody, welcome. Welcome Indeed, so welcome. much to our Women in Acoustics virtual lunch. And it's totally fine if you are, are eating. Uh, we're just glad that you are here, glad for this opportunity to see each other, and especially glad for this opportunity to honor Alex Tolstoy, a wonderful acoustician and who, a woman who was there at the very beginning of this, uh, this effort to promote women in acoustics. So um, at this time, we will go ahead and uh, let Eliza introduce her. And then um, we'll go ahead and proceed this time more like in an interview fashion where I ask Alex questions and, and she responds. Great. So, and then after, after that is done, we'll have some breakout rooms for people to just go chat about a particular topic or just, just chat about anything for a few minutes, if you have a few minutes before you need to get back to uh, other sessions or other things you're doing. Okay, so Eliza. Well, um, thank you very much, Tracy. Um, I'm very honored actually to say a few words about uh, Alex. I'll start with a few. I'm sorry. Keep them polite. <laughs> well, I can't promise. <laughs> so just a few biographical uh, elements uh, before I get into a, a more personal description. Um, Alex received her degrees, her BA and her MA from George Washington in mathematics, and then proceeded to get her doctorate uh, from the University of Maryland in applied mathematics and spent some very productive years in NRL where she was in charge of uh, match field processing efforts. Uh, eventually, she continued her same line of research and became a senior scientist with integrated performance decisions, while at the same time she was affiliate uh, faculty with the University of Hawaii. And then she founded the Tolstoy Science. Uh, we have her a few years far away in Hawaii, uh, but we were still uh, uh, closely in, in touch. Uh, I should say here that in 93, uh, and I believe that was while Alex was still at NRL, she wrote what I see as a seminal monograph on match fit processing. It is what started me going in my career. 
uh, along with the book Computational Ocean Acoustics. Uh, this one was my Bible. And Alex has uh, been uh, prolific in authoring papers. She has authored or co-authored around 100 publications. She has two patents on her inversion method. And as you know, she has given numerous presentations and has received many awards for her work and her presentations. Now, that's not all about Alex. Uh, we all know her contributions to ocean acoustics, but Alex started a second career as a water colorist now in 2012, and now she's an international acclaimed artist. Uh, she graced the Acoustics Today cover uh, with a beautiful uh, picture she, she painted uh, for women in acoustics, mm -hmm. and we were very happy to see it. She has won awards for her work. Uh, she has had articles published about her work. Uh, her work has been exhibited at multiple places, uh, nationally and internationally. And uh, uh, we're very happy to see this development of Alex as an artist, as a famous artist. And uh, her work, as I said, is in multiple countries, Great Britain, Canada, Japan, the US Embassy in Barbados, and of course, locally in the United States. And I should say personally that her paintings are a great treat. Alex includes me in an email that she sends uh, quite often. And I have to say, Alex, that my very favorite picture uh, of yours is the lemons. I can't forget the lemons. Um, what was it? I'm sorry, what was that? The lemons. Oh, lemons, lemons, got yeah, you. Yeah. And I would like to say on a personal note, I first met Alex in 93. It was right before I defended my uh, dissertation and I was presenting two uh, lectures at the Acoustical Society of America in Ottawa. Uh, and Alex was chairing the session. Uh, Alex hosted that, that meeting, uh, Women in Acoustics Reception, and I was a student, and I was in awe of the well-known Alex Tolstoy, who had become <laughs> my role model. I had read her publications, and my advisor kept speaking to me about Alexandra Tolstoy, and such, you know, a, a well-known name, uh, a woman in acoustics. I was looking forward to meeting her, and there I was, speechless, and Alex made me feel very comfortable and at home. <laughs> And at that time, she created a networking group and she got a lot of people together. She actually it was very interesting because she was included men and women uh, together in uh, her receptions. And it was a very pleasant uh, environment, uh, very friendly. And she got me involved in women in acoustics. And eventually I became a co-chair a few years after uh, my first uh, uh, visit to the to the group's meetings. And Alex has been a mentor to many of us, but uh, to me, she has been a great friend. And uh, Alex, I won't say too much, but we have had the privilege of having enjoyable, I have had the privilege of having enjoyable, stimulating and entertaining dinners with you and Ron. And we had very interesting and uh, entertaining discussions. And also, I always appreciated that you and Ron have been very kind and nurturing to my daughter, Marina. And uh, I couldn't have thought of a person more deserving to be recognized today. And Alex, thank you for everything you have have done for women in acoustics, but also for the acoustics community in general and the scientific community in general. So thank you very much for being here and thank you for everything. Yes, let's thank give a round so of applause. Thank you. Much. Thank you very much for that. Well, thank you, Elisa. That was that was such a lovely introduction. Uh, uh, and it's been a privilege to be a good friend of yours and to uh, see you get into trouble as much as possible. <laughs> thank you. You got well, me into trouble. trouble. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's really what you have to do i think uh especially as a woman in acoustics the more trouble you cause the more people remember you the more likely you are to be recognized there you go it's true <laughs> that's and i'm not surprised you like the lemons because that's the greek in you coming out that's true <laughs> the citrus right the citrus exactly yeah, yeah. I, I this picture has stayed with me <laughs> very wonderful. nice very that's nice wonderful. glad you liked it Yes. And Alex sent one of her other paintings called In Tune that is uh, also being featured on our Women in Acoustics booth at the vir virtual meeting. So you can oh, see one of them there. So 
Yes. So, so Alex, you were around at the very beginning of these efforts for women in acoustics and promoting women in acoustics. Could you comment on what that was like, what led you to initiate these efforts and how the society responded? Uh, okay. Uh, at the beginning, uh, I would say there were not a whole lot of women in the areas that I was familiar with, which is to say underwater acoustics, uh, physical acoustics, signal processing, engineering acoustics. There still aren't a whole lot of women in those areas, but it has improved somewhat, uh, usually. Uh, so it, it looked like there was a real need for uh, something to get the women together, to kind of look at each other, realize that we were not alone, and to network, uh, which is really a very important feature of this whole business. Uh, looking at other women and uh, trying to make an effort to include them as uh, invited speakers, for example, to provide them with fellowships, which there were so few women fellows. Uh, you look around and there are women who had done all sorts of work, who had published extensively, who were well known in the areas, but they just had not gotten any recognition. So it looked like it was time for a full-blown committee to look at women's issues in the ASA. And at the time, we had a wonderful fellow who was president, uh, Hank Medlin, who was just such a supportive, sweet person. And he uh, agreed that women were kind of getting shortchanged often. And so he thought an ad hoc committee, which was just going to be a sort of a test case would be at least a good idea. So that's what we did. We set up an ad hoc committee, invited women from all the various specialties to participate on that committee. And we discussed ways to improve the visibility of women, to uh, network, to mentor, um, and to just generally, uh, and this luncheon, for example, was one of the, the ideas that came out of the meeting. And I'm glad to see that it's doing so well. A lot of people uh, are attending these uh, luncheons when they can. And uh, I, I think it has done uh, a world of good for us all to see each other. So uh, the early days uh, certainly could use more participation by women. And I think uh, that has improved somewhat. Uh, there's still a, a, a ways to go, but uh, things are slowly but surely, uh, hopefully improving. That's great. Yeah. So what, what are some of the things you've observed or suggestions you have for how we can improve, continue to improve the climate for women in, in uh, science in general, but also in acoustics and in our society? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I would say that uh, there are a few things that one can do as a female in science and in the ASA in particular. Uh, networking is very important. If, if you see other women, go up and talk to them, uh, find out what it is they're working on, what are they doing. Uh, if there's anyone you know who might be interested in working with them, that's, that's very important. Collaboration with men and women uh, is very important. Mentoring is extremely important. Uh, uh, Elisa mentioned uh, mentoring. Uh, that's really key. Uh, not just by another woman, but by some of the senior men uh, in the various acoustics divisions or in science, that is critical. If you have someone who will support you and support your work and who will think of you when uh, something is being done, that makes a tremendous difference. A lot of the uh, a lot of the people, a lot of the guys who have gotten recognition over the years have done so because they had someone looking out for them someone who thought of them when, they, some, when a, a speaker was needed, an invited speaker or a collaborator of some kind. Uh, this really is important. So uh, I would say that networking is important. Uh, mentoring is important. Go to technical sessions often. You want to go make your voice heard, have your ideas put forth. Uh, don't be shy. Uh, a lot of times, uh, people don't know what they're doing. You just uh, shout out uh, if you've got a thought on a special session, for example, you want to propose something, do it. Uh, and if you, if it's approved, which usually it is, but occasionally you'll get arguments, but usually it's approved, think about who you would invite as a speaker and try and include some women. They're out there or we're out there. Um, 
If I may say something, uh, Alex talk, talked about the Women in Acoustics uh, Committee, the ad hoc committee, and I remember she invited me to attend one of these meetings, and uh, Larry Crum was there, who was uh -huh. the president of the society at the time. All now, right. before that, when I was a student and I had just become uh, a postdoc, I kept uh, filling in the forms that were coming from the Acoustical Society that I wanted to join technical committees, and I was never called to do that. So Larry Cram said, it's a great uh, uh, initiative, what you have, that will get women involved, and I want you to uh, tell us that you want to be members of committees. So I said, well, I keep filling in the forms, and I never hear back. And he said, consider it done. And through the uh, intervention, through this participation in the committee and in the intervention of Larry, mm -hmm. uh, I got on two committees, uh, Ocean Acoust Underwater Acoustics and Acoustical mm -hmm. Oceanography. I've been a member ever since. Right. And I met a lot of wonderful people through the technical committee meetings. And I knew what was going on. I knew what special sessions were running. And I knew how to propose special sessions. So that was because of that initiative that started back then by Alex. Of course, once you're on uh, one of these technical committees, you never get off. <laughs> yes. And then, That's true. Right. They, they, they accumulate, right? It, right. It's like that. append, the append command, right? Append new committee <laughs> to the list. <laughs> That's awesome. Right, right. So, so you spoke a lot about mentoring. Do you have a favorite mentoring experience or anything that comes to mind, either of people who mentored you or oh, opportunities there, you there, had to mentor others? There have been so many people who have helped me over the years. Uh, I can think of folks like, uh, looking back, I said, Hank Medlin was lovely when he was president of the society at one point. Uh, Alan Pierce, who was a senior editor of JAZA for, oh, I don't know, a decade or at least, he uh, appointed me as an associate editor at one point for years, and he was just wonderful. He would go to talks, and so Art Popper these days with the uh, Physics Today magazine uh, is wonderful. Uh, People like Elaine Moran, uh, that's not an official mentor per se, but in the society, she really ran things. And I'm pleased to hear that she's back and she's still involved. She used to collect wonderful statistics for the committee. We were always were interested in how many women, uh, what was the percentage of women and what was the percentage of fellows who were women in those various groups. And it was rather surprising to see where the improvement was needed. Uh, people like, um, oh, I don't know, uh, I would say mainly it was guys at, the, at that point. There were not very many women, uh, but Pat Cool was, became the first female president of the ASA, and uh, she was always wonderful to talk to, very supportive, very helpful. Uh, and in terms of what uh, the women have done, uh, I would say uh, that's a little more subtle and a little more recent, uh, that there have been women who have served as mentors. Uh, and at one point we had a formal mentoring program where I, I think people contacted me in particular and I tried to hook someone up with a senior woman, uh, but not necessarily, it could have been a guy, in the same specialty so that they could talk not only about acoustics and their place in the society, but what they were working on and the area that they were in. Um, I don't know that you need a, an official uh, mentoring program, but it didn't hurt. Uh, it, it, it was good to, uh, to tie people together. Uh, but um, those connections are so very important. They are. And all we they do. Are. That's great. So, um, over the years, you've had the opportunity to, to work in many different situations. You've been at national labs, you've worked independently and as a, as a visiting faculty, and then also in your own company. Mm -hmm. Could you uh, maybe comment first on like the transitions, you know, like how that worked, why you pursued different opportunities uh -huh. in those areas? Uh, well, uh, I would say that starting with a large organization first, <laughs> excuse me, which was at the Naval Research Lab, was a good way to begin. 
because I got to learn uh, a lot of different technical aspects of the work and there were a lot of people around that you could go to for advice and, and to interact with. Uh, and later on, uh, I guess I became more independent because that, how you do in your job depends a lot on who the boss is, who you're working for. And I know that my first job at NRL, the boss was so awful. He was a total misogynist. It took me four years to realize that I had to go somewhere else in, at, at NRL. And then the second boss was so wonderful that it made a tremendous difference. And then he left and he was replaced by someone who was not so great. So I transitioned to private uh, industry at that point and went to Hawaii for four years, which was a wonderful experience and might be why I end up working all the time because you want to prove to people that you're not just out on the beach that, uh, enjoying life, that you are actually doing things. Um, but even then, uh, private industry, uh, you have to bring in your own funding, you have to, uh, and they take big hunks of your money. So I decided that wasn't uh, the way I wanted to go. And I ended up coming back to the Washington area and starting my own company which was perfect because I hate to have people tell me what to do anyway, uh, being a rather an obnoxious individual that way. So working for myself was highly recommended, but you can't really start out that way. You need to have connections. You need to have a certain technical level, a uh, certain credibility. When you write proposals, people should know to some extent who you are and what you do. Uh, so the transition really start out somewhere where, where you'll learn uh, what you're doing and uh, you'll interact with a lot of people and then perhaps transition or not, depending on what's, what's good for you. Yeah, that, that's great. So as you had your own company, you were working from home, which more of us are doing these days. Yes. Um, do you have any tips for us on, like, there's the being productive side, but then there's the also like separating and still finding time to have a life even when work is at home. Could you comment on that for us? Uh, well, I, I'm certainly welcome to, uh, happy to comment, but I'm not sure that I have a lot of uh, credibility there because I don't have any children, which makes life a lot simpler. Um, I have a husband uh, that makes things more complicated in a way. Um, trying to work from home, uh, I, I love it because uh, you're basically left to your own devices. Uh, you can work as much as you want or as little as you want at a particular time. And I think the way people should be judged is on their end result. You know, what have you done? Have you introduced a new technique? Have you published? Uh, it's really not how many hours you've put in at the office. It's what you have done. And working at home really focuses on that because the only way people know you've done anything is what you have actually produced. Um, Dividing it up, it's easy to get distracted. Uh, there are always chores you can do at home. You can do the laundry, you can clean the house, you can empty a closet. You have to basically put that aside and block out a certain amount of time to just work uh, on your science. Uh, and sometimes uh, I think all of us tend to focus on what we're doing so much that we really tune out the rest of the world. So it's, it's easy to to just get locked into the working mode. Um, so it can be good to go and do something else periodically, but uh, don't feel like you have to uh, stop working and go out and, uh, as I say, do chores. You have to put that aside. Yeah, it is an interesting balancing act for sure. It is, it is. That's so very true. Oh, good. Um, so. I'd like to see if there are any questions from the audience. You're welcome to talk or, or type them in the chat. Um, as I ask Alex this next question, you can be thinking of your questions. So art, is this a, <laughs> just a new recent thing or was this something that you did um, throughout the years or, or how did that go? How did that evolve? Uh, well, that that's kind of an interesting question which I don't always have a good answer for. I used to paint when I was a child, as I think we all did. We all love uh, getting our hands in the paint and fooling around. And so that was great up until about the age of nine, when school and studies kind of got in the way. Uh, I just didn't have time to not 
study a lot. So I promised myself when I turned 60 that I would get back to painting. So my, my husband was, Ron was just wonderful about that. He ended up for my 60th, 60th birthday giving me a painting kit which was an easel and some paints with oils and watercolors and acrylics and some canvases and so on. And I thought, oh, this is great. And I went back and I, I tried to sort of do what I used to do and it just wasn't as easy as it used to be. And in fact, uh, watercolor was, I had never really done that very much and it was just awful, I think. So I took some classes and now I'm just so hooked on watercolors that that's basically all I do. Uh, so did I, basically start uh, 13 years ago when I turned 60? Uh, in a way, yes. For watercolor, that's true. That's true. And I would say that there is life after science. You don't have to stop. I stopped because the funding kind of uh, was getting more difficult and I really didn't want to deal with the hassles of having to write proposals and go through all that. So I just went into art full time and it's just been wonderful. So make sure that there's something else that you love. That, that's good to do also, to mix it up. Don't just do science, but to have other interests. Maybe it's uh, uh, exercising. People run marathons. Uh, there, are, there are lots of choices out there. Yeah, that's great. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you for that advice. And if anybody's ever interested uh, in getting a newsletter about uh, this art, these art goings on, just send an email to me and I will be happy to put you on the list. Elisa knows all about these things. She gets them regularly. Oh, They're fairly nice. short and it's once a week, so. That's delightful, delightful. Okay, any, any other questions from those of you here that you would like to ask Alex? I see some familiar faces. Mm -hmm. Hi, Kathleen, I see Kathleen's. So this is just a very simple question. When was that first meeting, the ad hoc committee? What year was that? I think it was 1992. Because oh, uh, wow. I think uh, Bill Clinton had just been elected. It was at the New Orleans meeting. And it was, well, actually, you know, that I, I, it's hard to remember. It's been so long ago. But I remember at the New Orleans meeting that the women were thrown in with uh, the minority committee, which had been established or minority ad hoc committee. And I remember thinking that they had very different interests. Uh, somehow the women's issues were just not given much uh, credence at the time. So uh, it was decided to break off into a separate committee. So it was 92, 93, something like that. And maybe you can put your email in the chat. I'd be interested in it. Okay. For the, uh, for the art note. <laughs> great, great, sure. That would be good. It's very simple. In case anybody wants it now, it's a Tolstoy at gmail.com. Okay. okay. Any other questions for Alex? Is everybody enjoying their time uh, working at home these days? <laughs> <laughs> has its pluses and minuses. It does. I don't get to have dogs wandering into my office at, at work. So <laughs> like that. that's true. That's true. But maybe they should. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Now, um, I was also interested in, um, Eliza mentioned that you have patents on some of your numerical uh, algorithms. Hmm. I, I didn't actually realize that was patentable material. Uh, I don't well, know the cases in which it is patentable, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, I know, I'm not sure it's patentable either. This, uh, those patents occurred when I was at uh, the Naval Research Lab and they had a team of lawyers. At one point, I think they went looking for things to patent and they contacted me and I talked to them and they ended up patenting two of these uh, uh, methods. Uh, but I, I, I don't know that how worthwhile that was. It, it looks good on a CV. It does, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's very fun. Very fun. Good. It's not like uh, folks who have gone out and actually made uh, essential uh, components of uh, equipment, for example, or, or in the medical world who have uh, come up with, uh, with vaccinations and so on. This is, those are worthwhile. Yeah. That's wonderful. Very good. I have to go, everyone. It was okay. very nice meeting you and Alex. Thanks again.
you soon, Elisa, and try and, uh, not too hard. <laughs> thank you. I'm off to the session, preparing the next session. Bye, Say everyone. Bye. bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. All right. Well, thank you so much, Alex. I really appreciate you taking time to talk with us today. And we want you to know that we appreciate all your efforts on behalf of the Women in Acoustics Committee and women oh. in the society and women in science in general. Um, do feel like we've come a long way in 30 years and there's still more to do, but we really appreciate you. So everybody, we can give a big round of applause, even though you can't hear it too. I'll have to clap loudly, I guess. If I clap loudly, does it sound like lots of people? It's been lovely. And I appreciate seeing all of you. Uh, it's lovely to see that this committee, that this luncheon in particular is doing so well. It's thriving. It's a good opportunity for you all to get together and to, to see familiar faces. I, I know the first time I ever went to a, a, a luncheon was not with the ASA. It had to do when I was at NRL. Uh, I looked around and I saw all sorts of women who looked like me. You know, they weren't uh, dressed elegantly. They weren't wearing high heels and pearls and uh, they weren't talking about clothing. That they, they, It was just amazing. I loved for the first time seeing other women who were out there and were not, uh, well, who were the same in many ways. So this is nice to, uh, to see too. I'm, I'm very happy that it has done so well and continues to do so well. That's wonderful. Thank you so very much. Really appreciate well, thank it. Thank you again. Yeah. Um, and if we were in person, I would present you with an honored woman certificate, <laughs> but um, that, will, that will be mailed to you. Oh, well, thanks. Great. I'll look forward to the mail. We'll see how well that works. Yeah, exactly. Elaine, Elaine's in charge of it. So hopefully uh -huh. it will, it will, I'm sure it, it will might. happen. So that's good. Very good. Okay. So now, now we're going to go ahead and take a little bit of time um, and go to breakout rooms. Um, the breakout rooms were set up such that um, if you have the appropriate version of Zoom, you will be able to move yourself to one of these breakout rooms. And there are about nine of them that have a topic um, working from home. If you click on the breakout button, I hope that you can see them. Um, striving for work, family harmony, making time for self-care, developing networking skills, uh, navigating power differentials, investigating different career paths, becoming an ally, dealing with imposter syndrome, developing networking skills. Um, I have that one twice on accident. And then there are three that are just chat rooms. If you just want to come and just say hi and chat with people, we have that opportunity in the gathering town, but just thought we'd go ahead and have it here since we don't have the opportunity to sit around the table and get to meet new people like we normally would. So um, this time I will open all the rooms. Yes. Oh, now I've got it. I was going to say, I don't see a breakout room choice, oh, sorry, but it just sorry. appeared. Sounds good. Okay. I should have opened them earlier. Okay. So okay. I've opened all the breakout rooms. Now, if you can move yourself, feel free to, and otherwise I will just start um, kind of going through the names and you can tell me which breakout room you would like to go to. So, okay. Should we click on breakout rooms? Uh-huh, so click on the breakout rooms and then see if you can click uh, on one of those names, names and join. I don't see anything. If you click on the little you breakout room icon. This, if you click on the number in the room, it will ask you to join. Yeah. I just. Yeah. Okay. Networking if you, skills. If you yeah. can see it, then if you hover over the, your mouse over the, um, or your cursor over the number, it will change from a number to join. And then you can, um, can do I that. I don't have a breakout room anything. Okay. Yeah. Jill, is there one of those that you would like to um, go to to talk? Uh, um, you can. Oh, I, I couldn't even. I don't. I don't remember what they were. Okay. <laughs> okay. Jill. General one. Just pop me into one, and I'll talk. <laughs> okay. Okay. Jill Thorson, did you I, have? I one? did. It the other. The other Jill said. <laughs> just. Just put you anywhere. Yeah, that's is, fine. <laughs> is that what? Is that? I don't see anything either. Know, Maybe I don't have the odds of that one. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. it's an yeah, old version. version. Yeah, it's it it just problem. depends. Yeah, new version of Zoom, like, like like it popped up today when I came when I logged on. So it just wow. yeah, it kind of just depends. Okay, well I will um go ahead and just put you in 
into different rooms and you know, we can Tracy, have a chance have a to talk. What yes, is, please. I feel like a moron, what is imposter syndrome? Is that feeling you're an imposter or dealing with people who are imposters? <laughs> uh, so Im imposter syndrome is the idea that um, I'm just faking it. I see. And everybody oh. else knows what's going on. No wonder so many um, people are in that one. <laughs> because I could actually really use that one. <laughs> well, I will, I will move you there. I, I will move you there. Okay. We could, we could have a whole just seminar just on that one. So. There you go. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Christina, how about you? Where would you like to go? Do you want the, are you there? Did you step away? How about you, Sarah? Can you move yourself? Is there a place um, no, you'd like I, to? I, I feel very, um, I feel very untech savvy. I was like, why do I have that? Oh, okay. I've definitely seen, I've, done, I've been in breakout rooms before. Oh, okay. I, I, is, maybe because I'm a host, could that be it? Cause... Um, maybe, maybe. Um, let's see. So do you, so we have people in the making time for self-care, work, family, harmony, and dealing with imposter syndrome, and then just time to chat. I'll just go in the so, chat. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Nice to see you, by the way. Okay. You too. Thank you so much. Okay, Christina.
I'm going to guess that the meeting's over. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> or else they're all still in their rooms and I'm leaving. I've got things I've got to get to. Bye-bye. Thanks so much. Thank you.